I'm Olivia. I'm Danielle. And I'm Anna. And on this edition of Outside the Lines, we're featuring varsity girls basketball. Welcome to Outside the Lines, where we push the boundaries of the sports world. Since the sports industry is significantly male-dominated, we bring female insight from the sidelines to the headlines. So guys, how's the team this year? So this year on the team, we have six seniors, two juniors, three sophomores, and two freshmen. And with that, there's three returning honorable mention all-conference players and one all-area player. So with the team fully stacked, I heard Coach Mandernack had a big milestone. Yeah, he actually had his 100th win against Glenbard South when they played at home. And it's only in his sixth season as a coach. And with it being only his sixth season, he's had two varsity girls hit their 1,000th point, and that's a huge milestone in basketball. Mackie Kelleher hit it, and Megan McClure hit it this year. And with that, two sophomores are about to hit it within their upcoming two years, Caroline Croft and Ella Winterhalder. Speaking of sophomore guard Ella Winterhalder, she moved up to number two this year on the all-time three-point career shooting, just behind her senior varsity teammate, Megan McClure. And speaking of Megan McClure, we got the inside scoop on her. Um, so my older sister, she's four years older than me, so she came here and she played basketball. She paved the way for me, I guess. I would never tell her that, but you know, your older siblings, like you look up to them and you're like, oh, like I want to be just like them and do like everything that they do. So as a freshman, I made, I made the varsity team. So as a junior, I was in the uh, three-point contest. At regionals, I made eight three-pointers out of 15. So I was one of the top four that moved on to sectionals. And then at sectionals, I made eight again. So I ended up moving on to state. A few months ago, like I found out, like my mom came into the room and she told me, she's like, oh, like Megan, like you tore your meniscus. Like we're gonna have to go and get surgery and see like what's gonna happen. I was like, oh, like this is my senior year and I'm gonna come into this season off of a, a knee surgery. Like, I don't know like how I'm gonna do this. I was, I was a wreck, you know, like I was, I wouldn't ever tell my family about it, like that it was like really like hurting me and stuff. But I was like, I don't know what to do. I was like, how is this gonna affect me for college? Because I hadn't already committed yet. So I was like, well, like I gotta, I gotta like overcome this. And then at the, at the beginning of this, of my senior year season, uh, they finally, they like reached out and they're like, oh yeah, like we for sure want you on our team next year. Like if you wanna be, with us, like, please, like, come to North Central. And so, yeah, so I'm excited because now I get to spend four more years playing basketball. Megan talked about the Bartlett South Elgin rivalry, but really it stems deeper than that because they had a travel team called the Mercury Elite that South Elgin varsity assistant coach Don McClure, her dad, coached. Not only were they coached by Don McClure, they also had three Bartlett players, Kaylee, Lexi, and Shelly, and three South Elgin players, Ari, Megan, and Maddie, who played on the same team. So that rivalry goes all the way back. And the crazy thing is, Megan and Maddie went to the same middle school as those three kids, but they have to go to a different high school. So really, Megan and Maddie could be on the Bartlett team, and that could be a state championship winning team. <laughs> Wait, that's so true! And Ella. Ella, Maddie, <laughs> Megan, Lexi, Kenzie. Starting five, state championship team. But if those five were on that team, there's... Hananaga wouldn't stand a chance. Montini would be blown out. Bennett. Bennett. They would stand no chance. Lexi just averaged 35 points against South Elgin last night. Who was the one team with the six foot two girl going to Oregon? Maine West. Maine West. They would beat Maine West. Yeah who's number one in the is, state. Has won this the state championship the past two years? Yeah, and if you had those starting five, there would be no chance. Lexi's averaging over 15 points a game. So is Kenzie. Kenzie. Kenzie's actually prob probably averaging um, 20 points a game. Kenzie's a sophomore and already broke her 1,000 points. Yeah, she's on track to break 2,000, break, 2000, break her sister's 2,000 point record, break the school record, and then you have Ella, who just is in second place for three-pointers. You got Megan. Who's in first place for three-pointers and already broke her 1,000. So you have five really good starters that play all different positions. State championship team right there. <laughs> okay, can we talk about how much difference a year has made in the Dundee Crown Thanksgiving tournament? Honestly, I agree with that. Last year they were 0-4. This year they went 3-1. And going 3-1 and one without one of their starters, Ella Winterhalder, who was on vacation in Florida. So that was a major impact in the game. 
So Raina Yang had to start. She has had some major shoes to fill. She has had to start now because senior Ari Williams tore her ACL this season for the second time. She got hurt last year at the sixth game. She got hurt this year, the sixth game of the season. She can't catch a break, and she was looking to play in college. Senior night is coming up this Wednesday, and she's looking to start. We don't know, maybe she'll get in for a few minutes. If they get past that, their sectional bracket looks pretty good too. And speaking of sectionals, super sectionals will be held at South Elgin this year for the girls. They could be playing at home again. Senior night might not be their last time in the home court. With the girls having an opportunity to have a home court advantage in the postseason, we need all the fans that we can get there. But the thing is, some of these fans and students don't even know about this game the girls have the potential to play. So I think the real question here is why are more fans attending the boys games over the girls games when they should be equally represented? From this edition, I'm Olivia. I'm Danielle. And I'm Anna. And this has been Outside the Lines.